Okay, this is Victor again at RestoringMercedes.com and this is a follow-up video uh, for a video previously made about the coil pack. So, uh, where do we start? Okay, so we start with the coil that I was trying to do something about. The coil that came to me uh, off eBay, supposedly it's a good coil. So, I put it all back together, cleaned it up the, the best I could clean spark plugs, everything just double, triple check, everything's good, put it all in, I got misfires, I didn't get like a hard misfire yet because I didn't drive the car far enough, but I did have fault counter registering lots of faults and ignition, so obviously it's going to lead to misfires, I didn't even drive it, because cylinder number 12 showed me like 65 to 70, to 70 different uh, different uh, codes on the uh, on cylinder 12 so that is not good so as you can see this coil is the one that came with the vehicle this is made in uh, 2002 so this is pretty old coil it has over 120 something thousand miles and on top of that this car is uh, Rentec tuned so coil works in very aggressive very like pretty much maximum mode and this coil I had issue with cylinder number 8 so, like I said in previous video, if I would not be successful, I would just uh, just replace cassettes, those, those coils themselves. So this is the result. This is cannibal style. We cannibalize another coil pack. This coil pack started to misfire on all cylinders now. Okay, except that fault counter showed that cylinder 11 was the best like I really I had maybe like one error on that cylinder so I just cut it open and I just got them cassettes again I went through all my insulators and the best ones these are not really good ones because they have splits and stuff so I found the set the best looking ones insulators since spark plugs are already cleaned up that's good news so I didn't have to clean them again this is my very uh, unprofessional work setting it's in front of the house I was just trying to do something because that's my daily driver I gotta take it to work tomorrow so I had to do sort of field conditions now this coil pack was replaced probably a thousand miles ago it's like really have it has very low miles on it so to show a little bit of how it looks now I didn't really go crazy as you can see the coil over there is still open I didn't even close it down because I'm still debating what I'm doing with this but so far I'm gonna show you the fault counter and this engine has been fully warmed and I didn't get into black zone where your faults would be over 10 and counting up so let's go inside I'll show you the fault counter and this is basically how engine runs and oh yeah on top of that because I did remove coil so many times uh, the thread stripped on this one and the thread stripped on the last one so as you can see there is there is no bolt there so I'm gonna have to do something with the thread later but looking inside what we have here let's take a look what we have for the fault counter air conditioner is on and for the fault counter it give you a little more brightness here as a matter of fact I'm gonna shut down flashlight let me let me get some more brightness over here okay function and bright 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 and there okay sorry about that so this is our full counter live and we see cylinder number 10 is gave me one error I did have a bunch of other errors all over the cylinders but they never went over 10 and that's when the engine was warming up and also I did have no pressure in fuel rail so I would assume that because we have no pressure in fuel rail 
obviously there will be some air in the system by the time it would, does, would, would purge it would have taken some time but again when engine is cold obviously you can expect some errors and I don't think they count for computer I think the counter starts when engine is actually at operational temperature so if I give it some gas when I give gas speed and load increases and it's not reading but um, that's sort of a good test because I can see if after giving gas back and forth um, um, you know just to see if cylinders would start misfiring or not so in this case so as we can see RPMs are 4200 and I let go of the gas let it stabilize and hopefully counter will reset and if it didn't reset we only have one error or two errors on cylinder 10 and now it it had been reset so it resets itself after some time so if you have a couple of errors here and there I mean obviously it's not great but if say again it's if it goes over 10 you see then I have a problem I now worked on cylinder 10 the problem was cylinder 8 cylinder 8 would show about 70 or 80 errors right off the start once it reset you would automatically get like 20 30 40 it just rises up real real quick really really fast so cylinder 8 was completely dead and um, when I pulled spark plugs out on the 8th cylinder spark plug B did not work at all so I knew for a fact cassette probably was dead uh, maybe MOSFET transistor but I didn't go that far but as you can see even after 4000 RPMs and fully warm engine I got two errors on cylinder 10 and it, this is all important stuff because you, you'd really want to know what's happening there with your coils because you can just keep changing coils and might not be the coil it could be spark plug insulator and so forth so on um, but as we can see right now it is still reading as you can see it's uh, RPMs they can go up and down that's live readings and after some time it will reset so it's not like a freeze frame or something like that so we had two errors on cylinder 10 and before connecting the computer to read actual values I actually floored the car down the block I didn't go far I just floored it down the block get it like nice and fast probably to about 60 miles an hour real quick and I did not get cylinder shut off so that's sort of good news but again full test will be shown tomorrow when I take it for 30 mile trip back 30 miles one way so 60 miles in total going back and forth to work and see what happens going to the shop and if it you know I'll gun a couple of times you know I mean see what happens when it's fully warm on the highway I'll get it to good speed but right now this is sort of encouraging because before I would have errors on 8 so that was totally dead now as we can see it reset the counter for faults and zero faults on all cylinders and that sounds pretty but pretty much good that sounds like decent result for pretty much very very old coil and really abused one too you know so this one is good but um, again it took me a long time to get coils in and out in and out bunch of testing cleaning and it, it's ridiculous but obviously easiest way is like fifteen hundred dollars later or three thousand dollars you spend on both coils and be done with it so okay so we see the full counter again I'll rev it up a couple of times you see I revved it up a little bit now we have error on cylinder 8 one error so as long as they don't climb up I think I'll be okay but again I'll probably leave comment after more or less a road test and see how it holds on because one to six coil was replaced and even on that as you can see one error popped up like I said earlier that coil has maybe a thousand miles on it so and even then brand new plugs brand new insulators so it's like complete package valve cover gaskets replaced so no oil leaks it's very very clean so hopefully this is this is the this is gonna work so this is it misfires on v12 right now no check engine or anything like that 
but again it's not really a long-term test uh, we can't I can't just say okay it's fixed and whatnot I will report later I see no codes <clears throat> no fault codes I will report later probably leave comment or maybe make another video if something that I did not cover in these videos has to be covered in video just to show